Ali and Simon from SimonWoods.com. Got a bit of a cold today, but maybe I've got the perfect medicine in the form of five Australian Chardonnays. Now, I don't know what your reaction was, first of all, dear viewer, uh, when I said Australian Chardonnay. Uh, if you were thinking, oh golly, over oaked, over ripe, wines that are not white wines, they're almost orange wines. Well, if you think like that, what have you been doing for the last 10, maybe even 15 years? Yes, once upon a time, Australia made Chardonnays that were chock full of wood and over ripe, uh, overblown. They some people call them the Dolly Parton style. But uh, now there's a leaner, sleeker side to Australian Chardonnay. Uh, they're planting the grapes in cooler regions so the grapes aren't getting as warm. They're picking them a little bit early so the alcohols don't uh, don't get up there and they're being far more sensitive with the oak. But for me the main thing is that uh, yeah the Australians have always known how to make wine, uh, well certainly in the modern era of, uh, of wine making there, but often they've not known when to stop. They, they always think oh I've got to tinker with that, I've got to tinker with that. Now they're much more content to let it be. Before I go into any more Beatles songs, I might as well start the tasting. Uh, I've got four from South Australia, but I'm starting with one from uh, Tumbarumba, uh, which is uh, McWilliams, uh, Mount Pleasant, Isabel Chardonnay. Now, Tumbarumba, it's, well, oh, golly, I told you, it's Tumbarumba at the bottom end of New South Wales or the top end of Victoria. It's, I think it's high country in uh, southern New South Wales. So, um, yeah, McWilliams, based in the Hunter Valley, they have, to, they, I think they've got still got some Hunter Chardonnays in their portfolio. But now, as with many of the wineries there, they're looking to cooler regions to, uh, to get their Chardonnay from. So let's see what the Isabella is like. And this is the modern face of Australian Chardonnay. Yes, there is, it is fruity, yes, but it's not all that overripe, over-the-top peachy fruit. There's a little bit of citrus fruit in there, some apricots, some, um, some, yeah, some light plumminess as well. Um, and it feels like it's going to be fresh. There is a touch of oak there, there's just a little touch of toasty smokiness, but it's not swamping the wine. It feels like it's going to have quite a lot of flavour, but it's still going to be fresh, lively, and make you want to have a second, maybe even a third glass. Yeah, ripe and sleek, um, and the fruit flavours. Maybe if it is peach, it's on that maybe maybe more nectarine, uh, and on the citrus flavours, it's on that tangerine edge, tan tangerine clementine, uh, and clementine, clementine. I'm never quite sure, but. Um, What's good about it is your, your mouth's left fresh, uh, refreshed, wanting more, wanting a, wanting a, a, a prawn or something, something uh, that's got quite a bit of uh, salty tang to it, because there, there is almost a salty, briny tang, a bit of, uh, uh, I don't know if that, whether that's from the soil or whether it's from yeast or not, but um, um, it's, it's got what I call life beyond fruit. It's, it's the sort of wine that I want to have a, another swig of. Nice start. Let's see how we get on in South Australia. I've uh, got three from Eden Valley and one from the Adelaide Hills. So I'll do the Eden ones first because they, they are all 2010 vintage, I think. The first one, Thorn Clark, Mount Crawford, Chardonnay 2010. Now the Eden Valley qualifies as part of the Barossa region, uh, but uh, it's uh, when you, people think of Barossa, they think of beefy Shirazes. But the Eden Valley is um, uh, the higher, the, the, the bits that are higher up, it's higher, cooler, um, and the wines that you get here. I mean, this is where Henschke grows a lot of their reds in, in, the, in the Eden Valley. Um, uh, this wine feels like it's going to be have uh, quite a bit fuller body than the uh, uh, than the Isabel, but again, it's got this tang and freshness to it. So maybe a little bit more of the peachiness, but it's, uh, it still feels like it's reined in. It doesn't feel like it's going to be wobbling over the top of its belt or over the top of its blouse. Yeah, once upon a time, Australian Chardonnay used to jump out of the glass at you. This one, you have to coax it out. I mean, it's uh, uh, with, in February 2010. Sorry, 2012. So it's it's a two-year-old wine, um, and it still feels lean and tight. Yes, there's it's quite quite a lot of uh, weighty fruit, but it's still waiting to uncurl. So I get a little bit of spiciness as well, uh, a herbal character, um, and there's this freshness of fruit, there's a citrus tang and twang, uh, this uh, reined in peachiness. Uh, what I find with wines like this, um, if you maybe open on a Friday, uh, drink half that night, but try drinking half it the, um, the following night, and you'd be amazed at how much they blossom. Uh, not blossom as in go over the top and overripe and uh, uh, come and come hither and get me, but uh, they show the characters that uh, that really need to, uh, I don't know, spring out of the glass. In the way that um, sometimes you get white burgundies when they're young, and yes, you can taste that there's a lot of classiness there, but or class, classiness, whatever. Um, but then they, uh, they, they uncurl, and you, yeah, wines you almost want to decant and give them a chance to, uh, to come out of their shell. This looks really good now. I've got a feeling it's going to look, what time are you at? Half past one. got a feeling that come uh, dinner time, seven o'clock this evening, I think it's going to be even better. 
and already it's um, it's improving. There's this nutty, mineral, lazy character coming through. Good wine. Where are we next? Heggies. Uh, this 2010 Chardonnay from the single estate of Heggies Vineyard in the high country of Eden Valley. Um, and uh, Heggies is part of the Hillsmith uh, estate who also do Yolumba and uh, Pusey Vale and stuff like that. And uh, if you're into sparkling wine, they do Janssen in Tasmania. But this is their Heggies Chardonnay. Now this is a different style. This feels like it's more on the, um, it's had more aging on the lees. It feels like it's going to be quite a bit, uh, a bit broader in flavour than the, uh, the, the Thorn Clark. But um, also feels like it's got, it's, in, in, it's what they call underplayed fruit. The fruit, uh, the, the, in terms of the, what, what's happened in the barrel, the, uh, the in, immediate, slightly gawky fruit edges have been rounded out. And in its place has got this, you know, like a slightly toasty, um, even a, a bit of that spent match edge. And this creamy, uh, nutty oatmeal type uh, character from the lees. So uh, let's give it a try. Have they gone over the top in that use of oak? Well, once upon a time I would have said yes they had. But as I was saying with the Thorn Club, um, so yeah, I, I get that uh, that mealy, toasty warmth here. But behind it, there's this curled up fruit. Um, and again, a wine I want to decant. Again, two years old, needs to blossom, needs to come out of its shell. Um, I had uh, uh, a, wine, a wine from a winery in Western Australia called Vas Felix the other day. Heightsbury, Heightsbury Chardonnay. And it was 2007. And when I first opened it, it was like this. Day one great day two better and I left some and see, see what it was like on day three even better and uh, those overt the winemaking characters the uh, the, the, the slightly uh, full frontal uh, here I am front of stage they'd receded into the wings allowing the fruit allowing the character of the the soil to come through got a feeling that that's going to happen here at the moment yeah as I say just a little bit too uh, forward and um, blouse is the wrong word but um, as I say, taste the wine making. Uh, I think the vineyard is going to talk more and more as it gets a chance to open up. Give it another go now. Yeah, already the oaks are starting to calm down. The fruit's just going, hello, here I am, here I am. And it's just going to keep like that. It's going to be this presence. Um, it feels like there's, it's quite a weighty wine. But, um, I mean, top burgundy is a weighty. Um, I mean, a two-year-old white burgundy. Uh, it tastes of oak and ripe fruit. And there's that little bit of the soil character that the more you sniff it, the more you give it a chance, the more it comes through. I think that's going to happen here. Uh, we're still on Yolumba uh, for the next two. Um, so this is uh, Yolumba's, uh, well, the, the Yolumba family. Yolumba uh, Chardonnay Wild Ferment. Uh, wild Ferment. I've got a feeling they use Wild Ferment on the Heggies. Blah, blah, blah. Fermented by indigenous yeast. That's what Wild Ferment means. It means they don't add any yeast. They just crush the grapes and uh, let them get on with it. And if the, if the grape, if the, the fermentation stops, well, they'll probably, well, they'll probably inoculate it and uh, chuck it into another batch or something but um, uh, if it goes through and that the fermentation is successful then you end up with slightly wilder characters I suppose it's like uh, doing impro in uh, uh, if, if, if you're if you're a filmmaker or something like that if you do if you let the, let, the, let good actors do impro often you get more than uh, you expected out of them uh, even though you you aren't quite sure what you're going to get I'll shut up and taste it so 2008 a couple of years older well, I don't know how close these uh, two vineyards are together, uh, but um, or I, I think they've got different winemakers, and the uh, yeah, I think the uh, the Heggies team have uh, some winemakers, and the Yolumba team has, has their own as well. Uh, but this feels like a, a more restrained, a cooler style. Is it that the extra two years in bottle have um, uh, knocked those uh, those slightly forward oaky edges off that, that, that were there in the Heggies? I'm not sure. Let's taste it and find out. But um, it, it does feel it's got this cooler, uh, yet yeah, on that just right nectarine going into the citrus and maybe even a little bit of the, uh, the ripe green apple. But there's also some of that nuttiness as well, some of the nutty, lazy character here. Um, and um, yeah, it, feel, it smells like it's going to be quite classy. And it's funny that one because um, it smells like it's going to be quite cool and uh, and restrained. But when you come to taste it, um, it's uh, it's got some of that uh, richer, rounder st uh, um, style about it. Uh, the the oatmeal and and uh, a touch of the, the 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 toasty oak that I was getting in the Heggies. I don't think it's quite as classy wine as the Heggies. It hasn't quite got the length, hasn't got the finesse, and um, it's two years old. It's already done its development. I think that the Heggies, with two years more in bottle, will be a finer uh, wine with higher cheekbones than this. So this is good. This one potentially quite a bit better, but both nice. 
Uh, let's do our final one, which is also your lumber, and it's FDW, which stands for Fine Dry Wine, uh, and 7C, I don't know what 7C is, is it a musical note, is it a small bra? I really don't know, and I also don't know the vintage, because uh, my label got scuffed, so I'm presuming it's something like 2008, but uh, I could be wrong, I'll find out by the time I come to uh, um, get this video up on my site. Now we're in the Adelaide Hills here, the previous three have been Eden Valley, um, Adelaide Hills further south, um, and uh, I think there's just, a, well, it depends on where you are in the Adelaide Hills, there's low down Adelaide Hills where you can ripen Zinfandel, and there's high up Adelaide Hills where uh, you can just about ripen Sauvignon Blanc. Um, this feels like it's going to be on the, uh, on the cooler, fresher side, and in terms of um, the previous wines that we've had, um, it feels like it's going to have a little, little touch of that oatmeal, some of the oak, but it's this seam that I, I really like about there's like a seam, a backbone, and there's a freshness of acidity. It's on that apple and ripe citrus. Not so much on the uh, on the stone fruit edge. Maybe there's a little bit of apricot and nectarine in there. But uh, driving it all seems to be this, uh, yeah, the spine, uh, a tingling spine. Which, if it's spine tingling stuff, let's have a see. Classy gear that. Uh, as I said, it's got this. It has got some of that toastiness, some of the mealiness, but it's also got this tingling spine. Um, and um, I, if it is 2008, uh, whereas the previous uh, wine felt like it was pretty much drink it now, this one still feels like it's got some opening out to do. And uh, in the way that the Heggies still feel like you're, you're going to, it, its best is yet to come. Here, it feels like one of those wines open today, maybe drink tomorrow. Um, and. Um, Probably my favourite of those. Uh, I thought the Thorn Clark was pretty looked pretty good too. Heggies as well. Um, but I mean, for me, uh, the, the the testimony to all these five and to quite a lot of other Australian Chardonnays I've tried recently is if you've not been if you've ignored Chardonnay from Australia for the last few years, it's time to give them another look because there's some terrific stuff. See you soon.